Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our online youth service. And yes, you heard it right. Yung uh, youth service natin ngayon. I'm gonna preach to you guys alive. Yan for our second week ng Love That's Real. I hope no na nakakasunod kayo. Uh, sino dito? You were here last week. Ayan, emoji naman kayo. Kung nandito kayo last week, if you heard yung first part ng LDR uh, na series natin. So ngayon, itutuloy na natin itong series natin na to. Let me just uh, share my screen for all of us. Ayan. So, uh, you know what? Itong series na to, what we're trying to do, yes, we're talking about love, sex, and relationship. But at the same time, in this series, what we're trying to do is tinatry natin mas mag-dig deeper pa. Okay na... Ano ba yung uh, pinanggagalingan nito? Itong mga uh, desires natin that we have that directly affects yung love, uh, sex, and relationship na parte ng buhay natin. Ano ba itong mga needs that we all have? Alam nyo, no, sa generation natin, we are so used to seeing movies, series, TikTok, or mga YouTube videos, or even a, a social media post that tells us what a relationship look, uh, looks like. Tama ba? Uh, yung mga uh, madalas na nakikita natin, especially in our screen, no, tells us ano ba yung uh, isura ng isang relationship. Di ba? May ano pa, wo- uh, holding hands while walking, ganyan ba yung itsura nun? Or yung itsura ba nun? Um, uh, and that doon, nag, uh, 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 understanding one another, hindi nagagalit sa isa't isa, or kung may pag, hindi man pagkakaintindihan, uh, nagkakabati din. Ano ba talaga ang itsura ng isang relationship. Uh, ewan ko no kung maalala nyo, naalala nyo ba sa generation natin, it came to a point na sinabi natin, naku, yung nakikita naman natin sa social media, madalas yung mga magagandang side lang. Tawa ba? Na, naalala nyo ba yun when we had that time na ang lagi lang pinapakita or yung pinag-uusapan are the good side. Okay? Uh, the happy side, the kilig part. And so, kaya, di ba, uh, we, we said na sana mas authentic, sana mas raw. And so, after a while, nakita natin no, na even yung mga posts ngayon, hindi na kailangan na laging may filter, hindi kailangan na all, always the good side. Di ba ngayon, minsan nga, nagla-live stream pa yung mga content creators just to uh, just for them to share na itong uh, relationship na to nag-fail na may struggle na pinagdadaanan sila sa relationship and so kaya um, nauso sa atin yung yung mga words like authentic, uh, genuine, legit or raw because now we see both sides the good and the bad and i think no and maybe some of you you would say na it's a good thing Diba na hindi lang natin nakikita only the good side but we also see the reality. But at the same time, I want to say this no, we cannot rely fully on this posts alone that we see para maging basehan natin kung ano ang relationship. You know why? Ask me why. Okay? Why? Because it's still not complete. Tama ba? Hindi naman 24-7 na merong kamera sa buhay nila or sa relationship nila na naipapakita nila yung buong picture of what a relationship looks like. Sometimes, syempre, dahil yung mga content creators din, they still think about ano ba yung isi-share natin sa public and what will, what are the things that will remain a private. And so, what I'm trying to say is, hindi masama no na may follow tayo ng mga content creators or influencers kasi some of those na actually are Christians also okay, we know people in our circle na alam namin na they are putting out contents about relationships or about helping others na very genuine naman and very biblical yung uh, principle but what I'm trying to say is that we cannot fully just rely on these things why because these are not complete while well, it's sometimes helpful, yes, sometimes helpful itong mga content na tos para sa atin, it's not something that we can rely our whole life with. Okay? Hindi natin pwedeng isaalang-alang ang buhay natin, ang buong buhay natin, dahil lang sa post na nakita natin or dahil lang sa tao na fina-follow natin. You know what I think? I believe, hindi pala think lang, no, but I believe the Bible is still the perfect place that we can go to para maintindihan natin what a real relationship looks like. Okay? 
ang Bible pa rin, naniniwala ako, ang Bible pa rin ang makakapagbigay sa atin ng picture. In fact, hindi lang picture no, na makapag-paint ng picture sa mind natin. But the Bible is full of real life stories. Real life stories that tells us a lot about love, about relationships, marriage, friendships, even yes, about sex. Alam nyo ba na ang sex may kita mo rin in the pages of the Bible. Why? Kasi ang sex, si God mismo ang author niyan. Si God mismo ang nag-create niyan. So again, I wanna say to all of us, no, if we're gonna, if we want that uh, understanding, no, or gusto natin ma-align yung buhay natin, Lord, ano ba yung gusto mo sa isang relationship. Ha? There's no other place to go to but to the Bible. You know what? Just this week, no? Uh, sobrang grateful ko kasi nung Monday, naka-attend ako ng bridal shower ni Coach Chell. Ayan. Sino dito? Uh, kilala niyo si Coach Chell. Si Coach Chell is one of our campus missionaries in our Cubao uh, district, our, our Cubao campuses, no? So, this Monday, no, kasama yung iba pa naming mga friends, yung iba doon actually mga students, nakasama namin sila in a Zoom bridal shower para kay Coach Chell. If you guys don't know, no, malapit na ang kasal ni Coach Chell sa March 8 na. So, please do pray for her and her fiancé, si IJ, as they continue to prepare not only for the wedding, but as they prepare also for the marriage. So, I'm sharing this because... Uh, part ng program na ginawa namin dun sa bridal shower ni Coach Shell is nag, uh, may, may mga in kami to share advices para kay Coach Shell. So isa sa mga nag-share ng advice para kay Coach Shell at encouragement para sa kanya ay yung kanyang soon to be ninang. Okay, ang pangalan niya, no, si Ate Jeng, one of our ates in our church community sa Victory Green Hills. And she said this, sabi niya, she shared about giving room for growth. Okay, sabi niya kay Coach Chell, if may i-advise daw siya, it's that give room for each other uh, sa kanilang mag-asawa for growth. Okay? So, uh, ang sinasabi ni Ate Jeng during that time is that, you know what, in married life, pag mag-asawa na, there will be a lot of transitions. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Siyempre, naging mag-asawa kayo, so soon magiging uh, magulang kayo, magkakaroon kayo ng mga anak. Siyempre, magkakaroon din ng mga changes sa priority, sa careers nyo. Uh, hindi na pwedeng uh, gumagawa ka na lang ng sarili mong desisyon. Ngayon, now that you are one in marriage, you now have to consult each other, pray for each other, or pray for that one uh, direction or one plan that God has for the both of you pag couples kayo. And so, Sinasabi ni Ate Jeng, give room for growth kasi maraming changes ang mangyayari sa inyo. Sa family nyo, in the future, even sa between the two of you bilang mag-asawa. The couple has to go through that process of making a decision to accept one another through these transitions. And you know what? Sobrang ano ko, ewan ko lang kila coach Jai, no? I'm sure mag agree din sila sa akin yung iba yung coaches na mga ladies dito, no? Na ang sarap makinig. You know, kahit ako no as as a, as a single person, kahit wala pa ako doon, parang sobrang grateful ako. Wow, Lord, thank you my church community kami na we can go to and we can hear uh, their advices, godly advices or encouragement na kahit na wala pa kami sa season na yun, there will be people that are willing to walk through with us or journey with us in this season. Ang ganda. Ang ganda ng picture. And so, while I was listening uh, kay Ate Jeng during that time sa bridal shower ni Coach Shell, you know, it hit me. Sabi ko, grabe, sakto to sa pag-uusapan namin sa ano, sa LDR, sa youth service namin. Because tonight, we're gonna talk about something that is very, uh, ano ba, very uh, big consideration. It's a major thing when it comes to relationships. Diba kanina pinag-usapan natin re, a green flag, red flag. Guess what? This is one of the green flags. And this is a major thing, major ingredient in a relationship. And that is the word acceptance. It's the word acceptance. Siguro naman, di ba? Wala naman dito sa atin. Gusto, ang pinagdadasal natin, Lord, sana ma-reject ako. Di ba? Wala naman. All of us, we all want to be accepted. 
guess what, no? Pag nasa isang relationship ka na pala, because our series is about romantic relationships, no? So, I'm, I'm uh, mostly talking about romantic relationship. Guess what? Pag nandun ka pala sa relationship na yon, let's say, boyfriend-girlfriend, or even lalo na pag marriage, no? You will still go through that process pala of accepting one another. Hindi lang pala nangyayari ang acceptance one day. Ina-accept kita bilang boyfriend ko. Ina-accept kita bilang girlfriend ko. Ina-accept kita bilang asawa ko. Hindi pala sa isang araw lang. Guess what? It's a process. It's an everyday decision of acceptance. Wow! Grabe no? Guys, by the way, intro pa lang to, no? Pero medyo, ano na ako, uh, sobrang passionate na ako uh, for this one. So I, I pray that you guys would open your heart as you hear the message of God. You know, these are some of the questions na napaisip ako na I have to ask myself. And I want to share these questions to all of you. Maybe you guys should also answer and consider answering this question, especially kung naiisip nyo na one day you'll be in a relationship or maybe at this season you are in a relationship. Here are some of the questions that you guys can consider. Number one, Does the thought of other person accepting me more important than me accepting him or her? Mas consume ba tayo thinking about ourselves? Na tatanggapin niya ba ako? Kailangan matanggap niya na ganito ako eh. Ganito na ganito yung ugali ko, ganito yung pananaw ko, ganito yung belief ko. Is it uh, when you think about relationship or when you think about your partner or let's say future partner, do you think most of the time him or her accepting you more than you accepting her. You know, what is uh, the benefit of this question? Yung benefit ng question na to, it is that it helps us na maisip natin, mas madalas ba iniisip ko yung sarili ko? Am I more selfish when it comes to relationship? That, that would be a good measure para sa atin. Kaya maganda tong question na to, to test our hearts or to have a heart check also. Second question na pwede nating i-consider is this. Am I really willing to accept the person that he or she is becoming? Have you guys noticed? Na-notice nyo ba yung question? It's progressive becoming. Why? Guys, kasi ito yung realidad na ang bawat tao nagbabago. Okay? Pwede ngayon na namit mo siya habang high school ka or college ka. There will be a time because of so many factors that all of us change. Question, are you still willing to accept that person even that person is changing? Hopefully, no? Hopefully, ang prayer natin, sana nagbabago siya uh, for good. Sana yung pagbabago na nangyayari sa buhay ko is the good thing. Right? Yung, uh, yung tamang pagbabago, yung maayos or yung magandang pagbabago. Okay? Yung mangyayari sa atin. But, are we willing to accept the person still even with those changes even with the transitions that can be happening now you might say no grabe naman atin iki yung mga tanungan natin ngayon kanina red flag green flag yung pinag-uusapan natin ngayon grabe yung mga sobrang deep ng mga question about acceptance na you know what guess what I'm very glad that we are talking about this. Kahit na, maybe for some of you, no, parang nazo-zone out ka na ngayon kasi hindi mo na feel, wala pa naman ako sa ganun, wala pa sa isip ko yun, this and that. It's okay. You know, you don't need to force yourself. But I believe there's wisdom that we are now hearing this already. Why? You know, sa, sa medical field, no, we always say this, prevention is better than cure. Big sabihin, no, wag mo nang hintayin na nandun ka na tapos tsaka mo palang aalamin. Ano ba dapat gagawin ko dito? Minsan, it's too late already. Sometimes he would say, sana pala, noon pala, alam ko na to, or sana pala, may nag-guide na sa akin. Sana pala, noong una pala, narinig ko na to. And so, that's the wisdom of why we're doing this. That's the benefit of why ngayon pinag-uusapan na natin to. Ngayon na you are still students. Na you, eh, because I believe so, many of you, no, hindi na to bago sa inyo. You know why? Because in our generation, very exposed na tayo dito at a very young age. Yung iba sa atin, alam natin na may relationship na or uh, uh, sa mga pinapanood natin, sa mga music na pinapakinggan natin. So again, this message that I'm gonna share to all of us is very relevant for all of us, whatever your age is. So, 
what's the reality that we are seeing this here right now? The reality that we're seeing right now is this, that we all long to be accepted. One way or another, nasa relationship ka, wala ka sa isang relationship, lahat tayo, we long to be accepted. Tama ba? L guess what? Look at this. In Psalm chapter 38, 9 to 11, I wanna read for all of us. Sabi dito, O oh Lord, all my longing is before you. My sighing is not hidden from you. My heart throbs. My strength fails me. And the light of my eyes, it also has gone from me. My friends and companions, and stand aloof from my plague and my nearest skin stand far off. Okay? In Tagalog, ganda ng Tagalog version, sabi ito, Panginoon, alam nyo ang lahat kong hinahangad at naririnig nyo ang lahat kong mga daing. Kumakabog ang aking dibdib at nawawala na ko ng lakas. Pati ang ningning ng aking mga mata ay nawala na. Dahil sa aking karamdaman, ako'y iniwasan ng aking mga kaibigan, kasamahan, at maging ng aking mga kamag-anak. You know, what does this verse tells us? It tells us, di ba ang psalm, no? sabi ko nga last week, no? yung psalm is one of the best books in the Bible na magre-reflect ng tunay na nararamdaman natin inside our hearts. And this is again one best example. It tells us, okay lang to admit, na tayo rin no, bilang mga tao, we long to be accepted. Itong psalm na binasa natin in Psalm 38, it's the psalm of David. Obviously, no, makikita nyo, he's very vulnerable kay God, very transparent siya kay God. In fact, when you read the whole chapter at 38, mas, ma mas ma-appreciate nyo, he was crying out to God. Manonotice nyo agad that he was very anxious, he was in pain, may pinagdadaanan talaga siya. And most importantly, the feeling, okay, the emotion na very obvious sa psalm na to is the feeling of abandonment. Yung feeling of rejection. Have you ever been in situation like that? Sino dito nakaranas na kayo ng gano'n na minsan no, sa, sa, sa buhay natin? Yung parang, parang naiwan ka or naabandon na ka. Para kang napag-iwanan. You sometimes, no, hindi lang about romantic relationships, no? Pero minsan sa mga kaibigan mo, minsan sa, sa sarili mong family, you feel that rejection, you feel that abandonment. Kung hindi naman yon, sino dito naisip nyo na to sa sarili nyo? I'm a messed up person. Okay? Wala, wala nang, walang magandang nangyayari sa buhay ko. Wala akong kwenta. I'm unlovable. I'm a damaged person. I'm damaged goods. Maybe no, for some of you, nagkaroon na kayo ng ganung thoughts before about yourself. Guess what? That is coming or rooting from a heart or spirit of rejection or abandonment. Kaya natin ganun isipin about sa sarili natin kasi it's coming from root of rejection sa puso natin. You know, while sharing this, na, um, and preparing for this message, no, again, I, I got reminded from one of the best stories and one of the uh, moving stories in the Bible, the story of the Samaritan woman. Okay? That will be found in John chapter 4. You know, mahaba tong mga verses na to, no, tong John chapter 4, yung kwento ng Samaritan woman. It's from verses 1 to 42. So, uh, I wanna encourage you, no, dahil wala tayong uh, maraming time para isa-isahin lahat ng verses. Guys, encourage ko lang kayo. After nung youth service natin, this weekend, basahin nyo yung story ng Samaritan woman. Ay, grabe talagang ma-encourage ma ma kayo at makikita nyo kung gaano kabuti si Lord. But I want to start reading from verse 7. Sabi dito, a woman from Samaria came, draw, came, came to draw water. Okay? Jesus said to her, give me a drink. For his disciples had gone away. So hindi kasama ni Jesus Christ yung mga disciples niya. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink from me? Bakit ka humihingi ng, uh, ng tubig sa akin, ng inumin sa akin, isa kang hudyo at isa akong Samaritan? woman. Okay? For Jews have no dealings with Samaritans. Now, we have to understand, sino ba tong Samaritan woman na to? Okay? Now, let's do something different right now. I wanna share to you a video. 
Okay, panoorin natin, no? Three minute video lang siya para makita natin itong story na to ng uh, Samaritan woman. So, let's just be Let's just uh, let me just prepare the video for all of us. Yeah. And let me know sa chat kung okay yung sound, kung nakikita niyo nang mabuti. Right? Let's play the video. I am rejected by others. I know. But not by the Messiah. God is spirit. And the time is coming and is now here that it won't matter where you worship, but only that you do it in spirit and truth. Heart and mind, that, that is the kind of worshiper he's looking for. It won't matter where you're from or what you've done. Do you believe what I'm telling you? <laughs> Until the Messiah comes and explains everything and sort this mess out, including me, I don't trust in anyone. You're wrong when you say that you've never received anything from God. This Messiah you speak of, I am he. The first one was named Ramin. You were a woman of purity who was excited to be married. But he wasn't a good man. He hurt you. And it made you question marriage and even the practice of your faith. Stop it. The second was Farzad. On your wedding night, his skin smelled like oranges. And to this day, every time you pass by the oranges in the market, you feel guilty for leaving him because he was the only truly godly man you've been with. But you felt unworthy. Why are you doing this? I have not revealed myself to the public as the Messiah. You are the first. It would be good if you believed me. You picked the wrong person. I came to Samaria just to meet you. <laughs> Do you think it's an accident that I'm, I'm here in the middle of the day? I am rejected by others. I know, but not by the Messiah. <sighs> and you know these things, because you are the Christ. I'm going to tell everyone. I was counting on it. <laughs> Spirit and truth. Spirit and truth. It won't be all about mountains or temples. Soon, just the heart. You promise? I promise. This man told me everything I've done. Oh, he must be the Christ! <laughs> All right. Wow. Gabe, no? It's from one of my favorite um, series. It's called The Chosen. It's in episode 8, The Story of the Samaritan Woman. Okay. Uh, if you want to watch the whole story, no, you guys can... Ano, um, download that app. No, highly recommend it. But again, let's go back to that. Who is this Samaritan woman? Okay, and that video that I've sh shown to you guys, grabe no, kita agad natin. Gets you lalo. This Samaritan woman is a rejected person. He, she was considered as impure, immoral. Kasi nga walang ano dealings ang Jews ang mga Hudyo sa sama, sa Samaria okay because they consider yung city ng Samaria as uncared city 
uh, rejected city, immoral yung mga tao dyan, hindi natin pwedeng lapitan or kausapin yung mga... Kaya gulat na gulat yung Samaritan woman. Bakit ka humihingi ng tubig sa akin? Guess what? Not only that, Jesus Christ knew that he... Uh, that she was sexually and emotionally broken. Uh, kapag nakita niyo yung buong story no, at nabasa niyo sa Bible, he actually had different, uh, five different husbands. Wala talaga siyang asawa pero marami siyang relationship na immoral and Jesus knew about it. Okay? She was deeply rejected. She was sexually, emotionally broken as a person. She's a kind of person who is crying out for acceptance. Diba ilang beses niya sinabi doon, I'm a rejected person. People rejected me. Uh, many people, no, let me say this to all of us, many of us, we're, we are not aware or hindi natin nare-realize kung anong pwedeng gawin ng rejection sa buhay natin. Rejection can actually lead to many broken action and decisions sa life natin. Thus, no, kaya may mga stories na parang papalit-palit ng boyfriend, ng girlfriend, di na kukontento, or may mga stories of adultery, may mga stories of immorality. Kung mahal mo ko, gagawin natin to. Kung mahal mo ko, ibibigay mo to sa akin. You know, that's manipulation. That's even gaslighting. Na yung word na yun ngayon, no? Uh, is very popular also even in 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 our young people why again that is rooted from that spirit of rejection in our hearts deep in our hearts we are all longing to be accepted deep in our hearts we are uh, thirsty para sa acceptance but the reality sad news is that ang ginagawa natin I, we go to other things in this world, relationships, most commonly. We go to different relationships kasi akala natin, dito natin mararamdaman or matatanggap yung acceptance na hinahanap ng puso natin. Remember what I said uh, last week? These are legit needs. Okay? Legit itong mga nararamdaman natin, itong longing na meron tayo na gusto natin may tumanggap sa atin na we want to be accepted. But what happens is that we do illegitimate attempts to meet a legitimate need. We do illegitimate needs, illegitimate, uh, illegitimate attempts or actions. Illegitimate siya kasi imbis na kay God natin mahanap yon or si God yung puntahan natin, sa ibang bagay tayo pumupunta to feel that need in our hearts. And yet, the reality, sad to say, it will leave us more broken. Parang Samaritan woman, nakalima na asawa siya. Guess what? And even up until the fifth person, she still feel, felt deeply rejected. Guess what? How did Jesus Christ respond to this rejected person? How did Jesus Christ respond to the Samaritan woman? Verse 13, Jesus said to her, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks of the water that I will give him will never be thirsty again. The water that I will give him will become in him a spring of water welling up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water. Lord, bigay mo sa akin tong water na to so that I will not be thirsty again or I will not have to come here to draw water. What happened? Jesus revealed himself to the Samaritan woman. Diba dun sa video, I am the Messiah. I am the living water that can give you eternal life. You are no longer rejected. If you would believe in me, if tatanggapin mo ako, not only he is giving the Samaritan woman the living water, pero guys, na-notice nyo ba to? The mere fact that Jesus Christ was in that well at alam niya na may darating na Samaritan woman at kinausap niya, even uh, through the actions of Jesus Christ, it tells us or speaks a lot about this, that Jesus Christ 
okay, is accepting, welcoming, and inviting every person to be with Him. Ano nga yung sabi doon kanina? No matter what you have done in the past, no matter what you have been through, no matter how many times you have run away from me, no matter how many times na ginawa mo yung mga illegitimate attempts okay, to feel that need sa heart mo, no matter how many times you did that, I still want to invite you to be with me, to accept us, to be His children, to be part of His kingdom. So, ang nangyari is that the Samaritan woman came to her senses. Natauhan yung Samaritan woman. Ikaw nga. Ikaw nga ang Messiah. Ikaw nga ang tagapagligtas. You're the one we've been waiting for for so long. Here's the good news for all of us. The good news is that Jesus is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. Tulad ng story sa Bible, a real life story na nangyari sa Bible, Jesus Christ is still the same today. He is the only one who can make us whole. Siya lang ang tangi makakapagkumpleto sa atin. Siya lang ang makakapagbibigay sa atin ng pangangailangan natin, our need for acceptance. We will no longer be rejected kapag na kay Jesus Christ tayo. He's the one who knows everything about us. Yan yung pinag-usapan natin last week. He's the one inviting us to have a relationship with Him. Guys, ito yun, no? To all of us, especially to our students. This is what God wants for us. Yes, you know what? I'm a, I'm a firm believer of that relationships are beautiful. Okay? I myself, pinagpe-pray ko yan na, Lord, sana in the future, uh, you, uh, I will meet the person that you have for me. Yung kina- uh, ikakaloob mo sa akin. I'm a firm believer of that relationships are beautiful. And you know, hindi KJ si God. Hindi madamot ang Panginoon natin. You know what? Even up until now, I'm 30 years old already. I'm still praying. I'm still waiting on the Lord. Kung sino man yung tao na yun, hindi ko minamadali. Ayokong madaliin. Ayokong ipilit. Why? Because I want to be in that position na Lord. I want to trust you. I'm not saying it's easy. Please. It's not easy. I'm not saying it's easy. Eh, kasi Coach Nikki, strong ka na kay Lord, mature ka na kay Lord. You know? <laughs> hindi, hindi sa ganun eh. Hindi sa ganun nakabase yun eh. But it's our willingness to trust the Lord. Lord, I trust you eh. You're a good father. And I'm willing to wait for your perfect timing for me. You know why? Kasi ito yung kal- gusto ng Panginoon sa atin. Eh. God wants to make us. First, He wants to make us whole. Gusto niya tayong buuin muna kasi hindi mo yan makikita sa relationship or sa kahit anong bagay dito sa mundo. Hindi madamot ang Panginoon. But first, He wants to make us whole. First, gusto niya na malaman natin at ma-experience natin ang totoong pagmamahal at pagtanggap. Why? So that when the time comes, in God's perfect timing, pag dinala na ng Panginoon yung pagkakataon na yun, na mamit mo yung tao na para sa'yo, mamit ka niya, Hopefully, it will be uh, sealed in marriage. You will now be able to love and accept that person ng buong-buo because you yourself have received and experienced firsthand the love and the acceptance of God. Buo, hindi tira-tira. Kaya kaya mong magmahal, kaya excited ka na magmahal, Kung sino man yung dadali ng Panginoon sa buhay mo, why? Because you know already that first and foremost, God has already loved you and God has accepted you. Wow. Thank you, Lord, for that. You know, that's the message of God for us tonight. Can we all bow down our heads and let me just pray for all of us. Lord, maraming maraming salamat, Lord na salita mo para sa bawat isa sa amin ngayon, Panginoon. Lord, grabe. This goes beyond even romantic relationships, Panginoon, I believe. But this goes to every relationship that we're gonna have in our lives. Friendship, family relationship, romantic relationship, 
for some of us, kapag nagkaroon kami ng sarili naming family in the future, pag nagkaroon kami ng sarili naming mga anak, Panginoon, this is going to be the same love and acceptance that we're gonna share to the people na ibibigay mo sa buhay mo. Lord, thank you for your word, Panginoon. Thank you for reminding us, Panginoon, that you are the only one who can accept us fully and wholly, Lord God. Lord, I pray, Lord, maybe for some of us here na nakaka-relate kami sa Samaritan woman. Maybe for some of us here, kinoconsider namin yung sarili namin na tulad ng Samaritan woman. Now we feel like, Lord, rejected ako eh. Lord, I'm a messed up person. Lord, I'm a damaged good. I, I will live up to nothing. Lord, napakawalang kwenta ng buhay ko or napakawalang kwenta kong tao. Maybe you're like that, just like the Samaritan woman na paulit-ulit niya, yun na yung pinaniwalaan niya. Lord, I'm a rejected person. Lord, right now, you are telling to that, to our students, Panginoon, na ganun yung nararamdaman nila. You are telling to them, I know, alam ko, anak, na yan ang nararamdaman ko. Alam ko, anak, na yan ang iniiyak ng puso. Pero, pagdating sa akin, I will not reject you. Tatanggapin kita ng buong buo. Tatanggapin kita ng buong buo. I will accept you wherever you are at right now. And I believe God is asking the question to all of us. Do you believe in me? Do you believe in my love for you? Do you believe and do you receive this love and acceptance that I have for you? You know, I want to leave those questions to all of us as we Take this time to worship. We're gonna sing this worship. This worship song is called Safe. Why? Because this is the safest place where we can all be in the presence of God. Walang ibang pinaka-safe na lugar sa buong mundo, hindi sa kwarto natin o hindi sa kung anumang lugar. The safest place is in the presence of God. As you think about those questions na, na uh, I believe the Lord is asking to all of us, I want you to worship God right now. And I want you to listen to Him as we worship. Let's worship God right now.
Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you that this is the safest place that we could, e we could ever be in, Lord God, in your presence alone. I just want to continue, Lord God, for our young people, our students, Lord God. Now, you know, I feel like, guys, no, um, for many years, the enemy has parang stolen yung innocence ng bawat isa sa atin. You know, because of, I don't know, it's just really how the world right now, of course, it's the reality lang no, ng presence ng sin sa buhay ng bawat isa sa atin. And so, that's why marriage has been tainted, mapapil na lang ang marriage, that they can divorce or anal kung kailan lang nila gusto, that um, uh, may kipag-relationship sa kahit sino na lang ng gusto mo dahil na-feel mo itong kilig na to or whatsoever, or for some naman, it's a real kind of you know, feeling talaga and emotion that you've invested towards this person or that person towards you. But along the way, it becomes manipulation. Along the way, it becomes very hurtful. Or along the way, siya na yung naging mundo mo. You know, I, I felt like the, the, the enemy has, you know, tainted those things na ang ganda-ganda ng design ni God for a relationship. Ang ganda-ganda ng plano ni God for relationship. But this is just the reality of what sin can do you know, to our lives, to our relationships and all. But I also want to say that there is hope for us. You know? There's hope. Why? Kasi buhay si Jesus Christ. Buhay si Jesus Christ at buhay ang salita ng Panginoon. That's why we're not stopping on preaching the Word of God. That's why we're not stopping, we're not just doing youth service for the sake na may youth service tayo every Friday and Saturday. No. And we don't stop. We are not limited in our youth service. That's why God has given us also that heart to share this message to other people. Yes, lahat tayo may mga kanya-kanyang pinagdadaanan. But guess what, guys? Pag na natin yung percentage natin sa dami ng tao sa mundo, just like, actually, kahit bilang pa lang ng mga kabataan sa mundo, talagang we are very small percentage lang tayo. Ibig sabihin, there's still a lot of opportunities for us to preach the Word of God, to preach the love of God, to preach the acceptance of God to many people. Why? Out there, there are still a lot of people, they are feeling that rejection in their hearts. That's why they stumble in different relationships. They make wrong decisions when it comes to relationships. So that's my first prayer and declaration for all of us. That we will not just keep this to ourselves. Kung na-encourage kayo sa message na to, nag-speak sa inyo si God sa mes through this message, that's good and I praise God for that. I praise the Holy Spirit for that. But I hope that it will not end in us. Preach the message of God. Preach the message of Jesus Christ to the world because the world is in need of a Savior. The word is the world is in need of, our, of, of a God's saving grace. That's my first declaration. My second declaration is this for all of us. I pray that you will encounter the love of Jesus Christ like never before. Maybe for some of you, you've been a Christian for many years already, one year or more. Maybe for some of you, you're here and you can admit to yourself na wala ka pa talagang relationship sa Panginoon na kilala mo siya, nag attend ka, nag-service ka, nagpe-pray ka sa Kanya. Pero yung genuine surrender okay, sa Panginoon na Lord, Ikaw ang masusunod sa buhay ko. Ikaw ang magtutulong sa akin where my life, Ikaw yung magda-direct ng buhay ko. That's my prayer for all of us. Na more than na, Lord, sige, ano bang kailangan kong gawin? More than that, I hope and I pray that you first and foremost will encounter the great love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Why? Because that love will be the one to compel you to follow Him. That love will be the one 
to compel you what to do in your relationships, in your studies, in your families, in your future careers. So yun ang prayer ko. Lahat tayo, kahit kami ng mga coaches nyo, that we will fall more in love with Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you. Lord, we receive your word for all of us. Lord, dasal ko, panalangin ko, patuloy kang mangusap sa bawat isa sa amin. Lord, kahit matapos tong youth service namin na to, or yung series namin na to, na LDR, Lord God, we will not stop hearing from you. We will not stop listening to you, Lord. Lord, I also pray para sa bawat isang studyante namin, Panginoon. Lord, bigyan mo sila ng mga tamang tao na tutulong sa kanila, na magjo-journey sa kanila sa, si- sa every season ng life nila. Lord, that they people that they can be vulnerable with, people that they can be honest with, Lord, tulungan mo sila. Bring those people in their lives. Lord, thank you so much for your word for us tonight. In the most powerful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Thank you, Coach Nikki. Grabe, sobrang powerful no shinare ni Coach Nikki. No? I don't know if you would agree, pero sobra lang din talaga yung um, parang yung passion ni, ni Coach Nikki kanina while sharing that. But I also felt like when I'm hearing the message kanina, no, na I felt like some of us may may have that kind of yung resistance. Parang parang alam mo yun, parang hirap lang din tayong mag-accept or yung idea of acceptance na parang um kasi tayo hindi natin baka some of you hindi niyo na naramdaman yon or kayo mismo hindi niyo ma-accept yung sarili niyo may ganun lang na na parang thought of parang hindi ko ma-accept kaya hindi ko ma-gets ano ba yung kinagawa ni God ano ba yung ibig sabihin ng accepting ano ba ibig sabihin ng love paano ba yung totoong feeling noon pero you know you know what i felt like um ito yung pwede natin gawin as an application for this uh, for this evening. Ayan. So for some of you, if mayroon sa inyo dito na uh, maybe you are rejected, you felt abandoned, or feeling mo na messed up ka na, nawalan ka na ng tiwala sa sarili mo, um, and takot ka ng magmahal, nasaktan ka na, parang distorted na yung view mo of what love means for you, ayaw mo na, parang ang dami nang nangyari, even baka nagkaroon ka na ng relationship and from the past na iba na talaga yung definition mo of love and feeling mo unworthy ka na, feeling mo ashamed ka na of what happened and guilty ka of it. But let me tell you, no, yung sinasabi kanina dun sa, kung naalala nyo yung video na pinanood natin kanina, no, when everyone else rejected us, it's not God. People may reject us even our families, even our friends, but know that God will not reject you. Ito yung gusto kong gawin natin. We will, we will renounce and declare yung kabaliktaran ng mga naramdaman natin, na experience natin from the past. Regardless kung relationship yan, romantically, friendship yan, sa family mo yan, whatever it is na naramdaman mo, kung rejection yan, abandonment yan, ire-renounce natin yan and ide-declare natin yung kabaliktaran nito. So what do I mean by that? Um, we will tell, or sasabihin natin kung who we are, who we are in Christ, sino ba tayo kay God, ide-declare natin yun ngayon. This is what we are going to do. You can you can say it with your own words, okay lang. You can type it here sa chat. Yan yung gagawin natin. Um, like this, no? parang um, I am accepted I am secured. I am child of God and so on. You can start to type it there. I'm going to give you a minute para gawin 'yan. You can type it there sa chat and I'm just here no now. Um i-declare ko rin to together with you but you can uh, continue to type it there. Thank you God. Thank you that as we declare this. Thank you now you are reminding us that we are worthy. We are worthy of the weight that we are love. We have a future. We are wonderfully made. We are unique. And we are whole. Buo kami, Panginoon. We are satisfied in you. We are forgiven. You can type it on your own words. You can say it. Kung ano pa yung who you are in Christ. Kung sino kayo, yun yung ilagay nyo dyan. 
okay lang kahit hindi yun yung mga nasabi ko. I know that God will be per- very personal to you right now. And God will speak to you even more right now. And as you are declaring that, even later on, even after ng youth service natin, pwede nyo pa rin yan gawin on your own time as you talk to God later on sa mga quiet times natin. No? Pwedeng pwede nyo gawin yan. But really, I want to take this time to pray for all of us. Lord, we thank you, God, na as we declare these things. Thank you, Lord, Lord, that you are assuring us, Lord, na more than just having yung acceptance Lord sa mindset sa namin, hindi lang siya basta in the mind eh. Pero thank you Lord because we will feel it. Mararamdaman namin na totoo ka sa buhay namin. Totoo yung pagmamahal na binibigay mo Lord. Thank you that you will quench our thirst. Na hindi kami maghahanap ng ibang source of love because sa'yo palang Panginoon. Sold out na kami Lord. Naramdaman na namin yung pagmamahal na tunay. Lord thank you because we will never settle for anything less starting today. Today that we receive and we hear your word. Thank you because we are secured in you. Thank you that we can look forward, Lord, sa future namin, knowing that you hold things together, that you have future for us. Lord, um, allow us, Lord, to have that kind of lens na mahalin yung ibang tao the way you love them. Panginoon, thank you that our hearts may be anchored in you in you, and in you alone. Thank you, Lord, that we can rest easy knowing na hindi mo kami minamadali sa mga pacing namin. Thank you, Lord, na kahit hindi pa namin fully maintindihan yung nangyayari, yung definition ng totoong pagmamahal. Thank you because you will allow us to experience it all the more. More than hearing, more than knowing, we will be the one to experience it, Panginoon. Maraming salamat for this evening kasi hindi natatapos yun doon, Panginoon, but we can journey it with one another. We truly love you, Lord, and we lift you up all the glory and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen.